In this lesson, I'm going to discuss how you manage video effects. And managing effects takes on several different forms, including the order that you put effects inside the effect controls panel, and also creating effect presets. So we're going to go over several management principles inside this lesson. Let's go to Working Files, open that up, and go to Projects, and then scroll on down here and open up 0903 Managing Effects. We have a couple of clips here in the sequence. We're going to work with them only to a minimal degree because we're going to be working with management issues more than we're going to be working with effects. Let's just start off by clicking on the clip that's on top because that's the one that's going to be visible. You know, we've got this clip on top. It's covering up what's below it. If I slide over to one side, then you can see the clip below it. It's got those clouds in it. These lovely clips provided by Digital Juice. So let's just take a look at this one. If I click on it to make it active, to view the fixed effects, I've got to go to the Effect Controls panel, and there they are. Now these fixed effects are applied last. Whatever you do down here, whatever standard effects you apply, you take care of that business, and then these guys kick in at the end if you want to change things. Let me just talk a little bit about how these things work. We're going to deal with properties in the next lesson, but I just want to show you what you can do in terms of managing these guys. If I open up Motion, Motion has several properties, position, scale, rotation, anchor point, etc. All of these guys have little stopwatches in front of them, meaning that you can animate these guys over time. Let's say you change some of the properties, and we'll discuss properties in more detail in the next lesson. But let's just say you change some of these guys. I'm going to move this thing around a little bit like that, move it down a little ways, change its scale, something like that, maybe rotate it a bit. And after you've done all this work, you're kind of going, that's a mess. I want to go back to the beginning. I want to start all over. There's a little reset button here. This reset button lets you start all over. There you go. So you can reset everything inside the effect. Not individual properties, but the entire effect itself. There is one effect that I know of that does let you change things individually within the effect. Let's go down to that one. Scroll over to Effects. I'm going to type in the name of the effect. If you don't know which category the effect is in down here, you can just type in the name of the effect. So I'm going to type in 3. And as I type in 3, it begins to narrow down the hits to the 3-way color corrector and 3D. 3-way color corrector is what I want, so I'm going to drag that over to this clip. And inside the three-way color corrector, there are these three color wheels. Each of them have a reset button. So I change this one, or this one, or this one, or and this one. Those guys come on like that, and I can reset each color wheel individually. That's about the only one I know where you can reset individually like that. Now that I've applied the three-way color corrector and worked with it, I decide that I don't want it here anymore. I can just click on it and say delete. Press the delete key on my keyboard or the backspace, and we get rid of that guy. That's how you do that. There is one effect I'm aware of that has a reset button that doesn't work because there's no need for it to work. I'm going to go down here and search for the black and white effect. Instead of typing B-L-A-C-K, I'm going to go A-C-K. You'll notice that it'll find anything with A-C-K in it, including black, track, black again, and peel back. So you can always look inside a word, too. So I'm going to double-click on black and white. Double-clicking on it applies to whatever the active clip is there, the selected clip. That applies it, and there's black and white. You'll notice it has no properties, there's no disclosure triangle, but it does have a reset button. Clicking that does nothing. <laughs> it's one of those things that they throw on there because that's expected, but it doesn't do a darn thing. But one thing you can do with effects, if you decide that you've applied an effect and you don't want to delete it, you want to keep it there, but you don't want to see it in action at the moment, you can turn the effect off. This little FX button here lets you toggle the effect on or off. So if I click that, that turns this effect off. So black and white is now off, but it's still here, ready to be used if you choose to use it, like so. Also, black and white is one of the few effects that has no keyframes either. You can't keyframe black and white. Either it's on or it's off, like that. Now I'm going to delete it by clicking on it, pressing delete. The order that effects reside in inside the effect controls panel determines how they are applied. Let me close this down so you have more real estate here. I've got this room to put a couple things in. I want to go on down to put in some distort effects. I'm going to close this here. Open up the distort effects. Here's distort. Scroll down a little ways. I'm going to apply twirl. I'll just double click on twirl so it's applied to this active clip. It arrives in neutral. Nothing happens, but I'll change that by changing some properties. I'll just hover my scrubby tool here and drag that to the right to twirl things, which is pretty wild, isn't it? I'm going to expand the radius a bit, like so. And now you begin to see the clip underneath it there, the cloud clip there. There you go, that's Twirl. Let's go get Wave Warp. I'm going to double click on Wave Warp. Wave Warp does not arrive in neutral. It makes a change right away, and I'll make it bigger so you can really see it. 
There you go. So what's happened here? I'm going to close these guys down now so you can just see them nice and neatly like that. So what's happened? Twirl is applied first, and then wave warp is applied to twirl. So this one goes first, but this one goes next. So the order is from top to bottom, with these three being the exception. They're the ones that are applied last. So even though wave warp is applied last here, these guys go last in terms of the entire order of things. So now that we've warped this, you can see that we twirled it first and warped it. What happens if we warp it and then twirl it? Well, I can click this effect and drag it. I can drag it around and notice a little black bar telling you where you're going to put it. You can't put it up here. You can't stick it inside the effects effects, but you can adjust it here amongst the standard effects. So I put wave warp first now, and notice that it warps things, but then when it twirls, it kind of takes some of the warp out. So it warps first and then twirls. I'm going to apply one more effect here. I want to go down to perspective and apply basic 3D. I'll double click again. There we go. We apply it here to there. Basic 3D lets you swivel something. So I'm going to swivel this guy off to like that. See how that works? And you can see the edges here where the wave warp kicked in and the twirl kicked in. So basic 3D is applied last. You're taking this rectangular thing and then swiveling it off to the side. Well, what happens if I put basic 3D first? Put that on the top by dragging it up on top. Everything changes because now I first swivel it and then I warp it and then I twirl it. I can change the swivel value, and you'll hardly notice what's going on because it's all being distorted after the fact here. There you go. Let's say I put twirl instead up here. That'll change the way it works too, because twirl will go first, and everything is warped. I kind of like though putting warp first and twirl second in that little order there anyways. So we've now done this thing. What I want to do is create a preset to show you how that works. You can take any effect with any properties that you've applied to it, and create a preset out of that effect. Or what's even cooler is that you can take any combination of effects and create a single preset out of that combination of effects. And even going beyond that, if you apply keyframes, those keyframes will be stored in the preset as well. So I'm gonna give you the whole shebang here. Let's go up to basic 3D and click on that. I want to swivel this back to zero, the starting point. I'll just type in zero here. And I wanna bring this current time indicator to the beginning. And we're going to deal with keyframes in an upcoming lesson, but I'm going to just give you a quick run through here now. I'm going to turn on keyframes for swivel. I've not swiveled it yet. I'm going to go into the clip just a couple of seconds here, and now I'm going to swivel it off to one side like that. There we go. Now it's swiveled. Although because it's so distorted, it's hard to tell that it's swiveled. There you go. It's now swiveled. And we've applied a keyframe. So let's see how that works. I'm going to scroll it forward here a little bit, play it, and you see how it kind of twists off to one side. That's the swivel in action with keyframes. I want to save this now as a preset. So I'm going to make sure this first one is selected by clicking on it. There you go. I'm going to control or command click on the next one and control or command click on the third one. Now we've selected three effects. And if I go up here to the panel menu, every panel has a menu in the upper right hand corner. I click that. And down here it says save preset. We'll call this basic 3D wave warp twirl. There we go. And it says scale, anchored in point, anchored out point. Scale means that the keyframes will be adjusted relatively speaking to whatever length of clip you apply it to, or you can have the keyframes anchor to the beginning or to the end and not be scaled. We'll just take scale, that's kind of the default. And we could describe it if we wanted to, but I'll just click OK, there we go. What I want to do now is apply that to the clip down here. So I'm going to take this guy and move it out of the way. There's our lovely clouds there. I'm going to click it to make it active. Don't have to do it at this point, but I just want to make it active. And now I want to apply the preset. You find presets in the surprise presets folder. And this is the one we just made basic 3D wave warp twirl. What a name, right? All I need to do now is drag this over. If I double click it, it just opens it up and says, Do you want to edit it? Okay, so double clicking in this case doesn't work when you have a preset. So I'm going to drag this preset over to this clip, or I could drag it up to the effect controls panel either way. And it applies all three effects at once and does that to that clip. Let me just watch that in action here. The reason it's black is because it's showing transparency through to black below it. There you go. So that's how you make a preset and how you can apply a preset. So just a reminder, effects are applied from top to bottom in this order. So this is the last one that's applied, except for the guys on top who are applied last. You can turn effects on or off here by pressing the FX button, either on or off. You can reset an effect by clicking on this guy. And you can delete effects simply by clicking on an effect and pressing the delete or backspace key. 
And then you can make presets by selecting whatever number of effects you want to select, and then going up to the panel menu and saying Save Preset. That's how you manage effects here inside Premiere Pro.